today at um, our scriptural circle at the local Baptist church. We meditated on this psalm. We prayed over it. First of all, just reading it and then reflecting on it line by line as a group and then praying over its contents for the local church, for the local people, for the, the, the people of the nation, for the persecuted church, for the struggling church around the world, for the wider world. It's a beautiful thing to do um, and very easy to do. This, the, the Psalms, I did a video recently on praying the Psalms. The Psalms really do lend themselves to being our prayer vocabulary, hence they've been used for, you know, 3,000 years at least in the, in, the, in the church, both Jewish and Christian. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my cancer. Bless the Lord, O my struggles, my health problems, my tiredness, my weakness, whatever it be. Um, I'm not saying I have cancer there, but um, bless the Lord, all that is within me. How many times when we get into the Gospels, when we get into Scripture, our problems transmute and go from moany whinges about the day, about the state of the church, about the state of society or politics, or about he said and she said, beam me up, Scotty, I cannot take any more, to peace and praise. And in that praise, a strange joy that one could never manufacture oneself. Not a joy of the pub. My wife and I used to run a scripture group next door to a pub in Ireland, and uh, we'd come out in a, you know, inebriated with the spirit. There was a joy about us. And this was in a Catholic church at the time. I don't think God looks at the denominational stamp. I think he looks at what we're doing, what we're up to. In the book of Revelation, it begins, Blessed are those who hear these words um, and keep them. And there's a blessing definitely on reading the word of God and, and, and praying in it, sharing it. And it, yeah, so as I say, we'd come out of the we'd come out of our prayer meeting next door to the pub, in in a, in holy inebriation, joy. And the guys would come out of the pub, and it was so obvious to us they're on a different drug. <laughs> they're on a different um, stimulus, shall we say? And ours, from our angle, from our vantage point, where we were at, looked infinitely superior no wobbly legs no cloudy um, minds formed by shaped by cheered by the biblical narrative by the word of God where I want to specifically go with this is to talk about the blessings of God who takes away our sins the blessings of God who forgives all of our iniquities, who casts, as Micah says, I think it's Micah, uh, the final chapter anyway of Micah, Micah's um, book of prophecies, that he will hurl our sins into the sea. Yes, here it is here, Micah 7, 19. He will gain, have compassion on us. He will tread our iniquities underfoot. You will cast all our sins into the depths of the sea. You know, what could raise up those sins from the depths of the sea? This is the great good news of the gospel. For the older we get, as I often say to my students, just the more burden on our backs we are inevitably going to have, if we're honest, that, you know, we're not the great I am. We're not the great saviour of the church or a church or whatever. We're not the next John Wesley or, you know, whatever it be, that we're accumulating sins and burdens. But praise be God. He is the king. He is the victor. And he will cast, and he has cast, 
all of my sins into the sea the sea of his blood shed for us on the cross the sea of his compassion and mercy this is the great news of the real gospel of Jesus Christ not one with institutional intermediaries of priests and confession boxes of a revolving a revolving door back to the priest back to the padre who you always tell your sins to and who very very rarely lets you have a glimpse of his own because of course he's pretty near perfect he's got it cracked somehow magically through those magic powers he has forgive me but as somebody coming away from all of that one has the delight and there was others at the meeting tonight from similar backgrounds who were in agreement that one has this absolute joy of forgiveness as far as the east is from the west verse 12 so far does he remove our transgressions from us sure there's no limit to east there's no limit to west where does east begin and west <laughs> you know end so far does he remove our transgressions from us as a father shows compassion to his children so the lord shows compassion to those who fear him you know sometimes people might think well if you go about saying oh i'm a son of god look at me you know i've i've been adopted into the family of god my sins have been forgiven it'll lead to flippancy it'll lead to mediocrity well it shouldn't it should lead us into the family of god for that's what it's meant to do we're adopted so come and join the family come and sit at table but i haven't done enough fasting i haven't done enough prayer i'm not worthy i'm still a sinner jesus has forgiven you jesus has paid the price if you are in christ jesus if he who is in she who is in christ jesus is a new creation but i don't feel new yet pray and ask the lord to renew your mind and heart open the bible get into the promises of god of a new creation romans 8 galatians 3 galatians 5 all throughout scripture ask the lord to reveal to you the power of forgiveness that is available in christ jesus alone this isn't forgiveness until the next time i inevitably fall this is forgiveness forgiveness a putting away of sin sin being dealt with at the cross of christ so that we can enter in to the holy places as the high priest did so that we can wear the royal garb of the sons of god so that we can really begin the work of interceding for a fallen world so that we can present a real gospel of real transformation not just a sacramental church that's going to meet out salvation sunday to sunday i go to sunday worship i go to church worship i think it's important to be involved in a local church but our salvation is not meted out by local padres that's not what i read in scripture and i think the longer i spend away from let's say the catholic church or the orthodox church the more it seems bizarre to me that these systems have actually um, developed that forgiveness would be so dependent upon um, sacraments as opposed to faith in Jesus Christ the redeemed sinner does not go back to bathe in sin going hallelujah I've got a green card I can do what I want now no 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 the forgiven genuinely forgiven soul who's found repentance and in repentance has turned to Christ and had his sins forgiven 
will spend his time in thanksgiving and in fully becoming what he now is, namely a new creation. Look at these three beautiful creatures. Let's return to this, the, to him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood and made us a kingdom, priests to his God and Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. I read of nowhere in scripture of glory to priests, glory to saints, glory to Mary. Yes, all generations will call her blessed. Blessed is she who was chosen to be the mother of our Lord, our God and our Savior. But all glory to God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. To him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood and made us a kingdom made us a kingdom priests to his god and father to him be glory and dominion forever amen <laughs>